Welcome to Unit 1. In this video, we're going to do three things. We'll give you a brief overview of what we'll be covering in the course this term. I gave you an outline of our approach in the welcome video, so I'll be summarizing that. We'll talk about the two main databases that we're going to be focusing on during the course. Finally, we'll talk about the company that we're going to be using as our ongoing case study during the term. It's JB Hi-Fi, the electronics retailer. First, what will we cover in this course? Financial analysis focuses on the analysis of financial information found primarily, but not exclusively, in the financial reports of firms. The course takes a structured approach to our analytical task. We systematically go through four key analytical steps. The order of these is important. We begin with business analysis. In short, this step requires us to ask how does the business make money and what are the prospects for it making money into the future? This step covers both industry analysis and how a firm positions itself within an industry. This first step gives us a sense of what we expect to see when we look at the numbers. The financial statements won't make sense without having the context of the conditions in which the business operates. We ask these sorts of questions. Are sales seasonal or cyclical? What drives demand for the product or service that we're offering? Is the business capital intensive or people intensive? Are the assets of the business long term or do they get replaced regularly? Is the business attractive to lenders who would provide debt financing for the business? All of these sorts of questions lead to our second analytical step, accounting analysis. Our key question here is examining the extent to which the financial statements do a good or a bad job of reflecting the underlying economics of the business. This is going to be a function of how well the accounting rules allow a business to reflect its performance and the extent to which the rules provide managers with discretion in their accounting decisions. We're also going to look at the quality of a firm's non-financial disclosures. In recent years, there's been an increasing demand for firms to provide information about their ESG-related activities. Once we have an understanding of how the business makes money and the extent to which that's reflected or not reflected in the financial statements, we can commence our financial analysis. This is our third analytical step and involves the systematic assessment of recent financial performance. Our final analytical task is prospective analysis. This involves taking everything we know about the business, its accounting and its recent performance, and trying to predict the future, as reflected in the financial statements. We can then use those forecasts in a variety of contexts. A particularly important context is valuing the firm. Our primary approach in, in this course is going to be an equity valuation, but we also cover asset or enterprise valuation as well. We'll then see how our four analytical steps can be applied in a variety of contexts, including investment management, credit analysis, and so on. The second thing I wanted to mention were the two main databases that we're going to be using to obtain financial statement information. The first is the FactSet database. If you are enrolled in the course by the start of February, then you should, hopefully, have received an email from FactSet that's sent to your UNSW email address that will have your FactSet account details. Have a look at Moodle on what to do if you have not received this email. We'll be making use of FactSet throughout the term. It provides a lot of information about listed companies globally. The other database that we're going to use is Morningstar's Data Analysis Database. You can access that through the UNSW Library webpage. It also contains a lot of financial statement and other information about listed companies. Data Analysis focuses on Australian and New Zealand companies. I've put up a guide on accessing financial statement information through this database on Moodle. We'll have a brief look at both of these databases during week one. Make sure that you've been able to log on to FactSet and also data analysis beforehand. I'm also interested in hearing what other data sources you've found useful, and we'll keep a list of those resources on Moodle. Finally, we'll be looking at one company in detail throughout the term as we progress through our analytical steps.
This term we're going to be using JB Hi-Fi. They're an electronic goods and equipment retailer. They have a large physical store present and increasing online sales channel. It's obviously an interesting time for retailers in Australia. So we'll be thinking very carefully about the industry conditions that they face and the implication that these conditions have on JV Hi-Fi's Hi accounting and particularly our forecasts of future performance. If you're able to visit a shopping mall, see if you can find a JB Hi-Fi store. Have a look at what they sell and have a look at the way they sell it. Are things heavily marked down at the moment? Have a look at their website. One of the things that we're going to be considering is the general shift between sales from physical stores to online sales. We'll keep track of JB Hi-Fi information in a dedicated section on Moodle. As we progressively analyse JB Hi-Fi, you should be able to apply the same lens to the company that you are examining for the major project. JB Hi-Fi is recently announcing their 2023 half-yearly results, so we'll carefully look at what material we, they provide and how we can most effectively make use of what's there. And you'll see in Moodle that I've provided a starting list of other resources that will hopefully be helpful to you as we progress through the course. These will include other databases, apps, good Twitter accounts and podcasts. I hope that you can add to these so that we can together build up a really useful set of information sources by the end of the term. So jump onto the Moodle site, have a look about, check out the discussion forums there and let's get going on accessing both our financial and our non-financial data.